Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining us. I am Brandon Hudson. And I'm Amy Lang. And we begin with some breaking news right now. This coming from Romulus. And that is where police and fire crews are on the scene of a train derailment. I want you to take a look at this. This is happening in the area of Wick Road near Shook. At least nine cars jumped the tracks. Wick Road is closed because of the derailment. So far, no injuries have been reported. And the good news here is that there does not appear to be any hazardous materials involved in the derailment. No major roadways are closed. And want you to stay with Fox 2 on air and online for updates as they become available. And we've heard the findings from an independent report on the Oxford High School shooting. They released earlier this week, the report was critical of school leaders, saying the shooting was avoidable. That is a hard pill to swallow. But now, nearly two years after the tragedy, Oxford High School parents and other community members will get a chance to ask questions and speak about this investigation. Fox News' Robin Murdoch is live now with the latest. Robin, a lot of people have been waiting to speak for, about this for a very long time. Yeah, and a lot of people are expected to attend these meetings today. Brandon and Amy, we're currently standing outside the Oxford Township Hall here in Oxford, where we are now just a couple of hours away from the first of three meetings to discuss that deadly shooting at the high school now almost two years ago. The meetings come just days after a new report was released, basically blaming the district for not doing enough. It's been two years this month since gunfire rang out inside the halls of Oxford High, taking the lives of four students and injuring seven others. After two long years, the results of an independent investigation into the mass shooting are finally released, and those touched by the tragedy will finally be able to ask questions. It is the hope for Tom and I that this report will not be the end, but rather a beginning. A beginning of healing, a beginning of understanding. Corey Bailey, the former treasurer of the Oxford School Board, shared his thoughts on the publication during this press conference. Both he and the Oxford School Board president resigned last year over what they felt were policies and procedures that weren't followed in the days leading up to and after the shooting. Concerns confirmed in the Guidepost Solutions probe. I've conducted a couple of investigations for school districts. And in each of those investigations, made it, the board who wanted the truth to come out made it clear that every employee was required to cooperate in the investigation or be subject to discipline. That never happened here. You've got to ask yourself why. More than 100 people were questioned in the 572-page report. Dozens of others, though, refused. The investigation also found that the attack was avoidable, that the district ignored warning signs, like graphic pictures drawn by the gunman, along with other opportunities to stop the shooting, even sending the 15-year-old back to class instead of home, following a meeting with his parents and the school counselor minutes before the massacre. I spent a number of years as a firefighter, and fire drills, mandated, practiced, trained. We don't do that with threat assessment. So I want to be an advocate on how to how to get that implemented. That likely a topic of conversation during the trio of public hearings that will be held inside Oxford Township Hall later this afternoon. The gatherings are expected to be well attended as parents, students and survivors continue to seek closure some 24 months after they all lost so much. The heartbreak, the pain still very much present. This should have come out a very long time ago. We can't make changes and um, prevent things from happening if we don't know where the failures were. So again, three meetings are set to happen this afternoon here at the Oxford Township Hall here in Oxford. The first one will start at 1 o'clock. It will be followed by another meeting at 3.30, and then the last one is scheduled for 6.30 tonight. Of course, stay with us right here at Fox 2 News for the very latest coverage. For now, we are live in Oxford. I'm Robin Murdoch for Fox 2 News. So, Rob, we know that there's three meetings today, but I'm sure there are a lot of people who may be at work or out of town and can't make these three meetings. Are there any other meetings that are uh, scheduled for any other days after today? Well, uh, right now, that is unclear, Brandon. I imagine a lot will depend on exactly what happens inside the township hall here for those three meetings. But the organizers of these meetings do say that follow-up meetings are going to be considered. So, of course, we'll keep you posted on that as well. Back to you. Well, Robin, we appreciate your report. Thank you, and have a good day. Amy. Mm -hmm.
Well, other news now, a Detroit family looking for justice for a young man murdered at a gas station. Take a look at this surveillance photo and video. It shows a man walking across a gas station parking lot on Seven Mile near Braille Street. When he leaves the frame for just a few seconds, five shots are fired. 24-year-old Devontae Bridges is killed. The same man you saw before, then running back the way he came. This happening in July of last year. Family members joining community activist groups hoping to find the killer. It hurts me to look into my kid's face and say, uncle's never coming home. My son did not deserve this at all. No kid deserved it. He wanted to set the world on fire doing great things. Mm. No word on a motive. There is a $2,500 reward through Crime Stoppers for information leading to an arrest. Well, it is an unthinkable tragedy. It happens uh, too often in our country, and we're talking about children that are dying from fentanyl poisoning. It happened to a one-year-old boy in Michigan while he was in the care of a relative. Yeah, that child died months ago, but still no criminal charges in this case. Fox 2's Scott Wolchek looking for answers. Take to the park. Urban air, you know, we just had a ball. Brightened up my whole life. Donnell Holmes didn't expect to become a father in his 60s, but when Prentice Kaleo Good was born, Donnell felt a new sense of purpose in life. He was the joy of my life, you know what I'm saying? I, he brought me a lot of happiness. That happiness was cut short. Prentice Kaleo Good died of a fentanyl overdose on August 22nd. He was only one. To see a, a little baby in a casket. It's the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I just need, I just need some type of justice. Donnell is wearing a military uniform, symbolizing his battle for that justice. He's come here to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office every Monday since his son's death, but says he's been given the runaround. I'm gonna put my best guy on it. Uh, we're gonna make this a priority. And in the same breath, he says, but we're real busy down here. Despite being contacted in the late afternoon, the prosecutor's office did get back to us saying they're looking into the case. They say that they're gonna have a caseworker call you tomorrow. Well, like I said, they, they keep blowing smoke. You know, they're telling me what they think I wanna hear. You know, I didn't get any, I, I didn't get any uh, response from them until I started talking to supervisors, you know, the, the police supervisors, uh, child protection agency. I mean, they've been bouncing me around for a whole month. This father, frustrated, he believes the death of his son, his baby boy, should be open and shut. He won't rest until the person responsible for Prentice's death is held accountable. If you could say anything to the prosecutor, what would you say? Help me. Help me. So sad. As you heard, the prosecutor's office is expected to reach out to Donnell today. And we'll let you know what happens. Well, day after we told you about lead in the tap water in Redford, routine tests reveal elevated levels of lead in tap water in Harper Woods. Now, over the summer, water samples were collected from 30 homes. The State Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy found that samples from four of those homes exceeded the action level of 15 parts per billion. The goal is to have zero parts per billion because there is no safe level of lead in the blood. The biggest worry here is for children and, and developing fetuses, and that's why we're particularly worried about pregnant women uh, and young kids. And what it does is it, it leaches into the bone, and then over time it actually leaches into the brain, and it can cause um, uh, long-term cognitive deficits in, in folks who are exposed. If you have lead in service lines and you are Medicaid eligible, you can get a free water filter from Harper Woods DPW. Now, do not use hot water for drinking, preparing food or cooking, or preparing baby formula. Boiling water does not reduce lead levels. Some homes in Redford Township, they had high levels of lead as well. Eligible residents there can pick up free filters at Redford Township Community Center from 2 to 7. 
Well, just days after we told you about him being reinstated, the fire chief of Dearborn is formally charged with drunk driving. Joseph Murray was pulled over while driving home from the bar in the early morning hours of August 29th. He refused a breathalyzer but was seen on camera failing field sobriety tests. Murray was arrested and put on administrative leave. However, the city's mayor placed him back on the job earlier this week. He's due in court next month. Well, with tentative agreements on the table for each of the three automakers, the UAW is moving forward with its contract ratification process. And here's a look where things stand. UAW members with Ford are currently reviewing the agreement and have started voting. Leaders for UAW's Talantis Council will meet in Detroit today to begin their vote. And UAW leadership for GM will do the same tomorrow. If each council approves the agreements, the UAW will then review each one publicly on Facebook Live and then the rank and file will vote.